In today's video, guys, we're gonna teach you how to build your own shed. We're doing framing today. We're doing it in manageable sections so that as a DIYer, you can build it yourself and get professional results, even if you're not a professional framer. Let me just walk you through the plan here real quick. We have a 16 foot actual dimension length of shed here. So that means that if I wanna build a 16 foot wall and then lift it up, I'm gonna have all the weight of about the 16 studs and top and bottom plates and then four sheets of plywood that's a lot to manage on your own. So instead, what I do is I'll break this down into an eight foot section and then another eight foot section. And I'm gonna have an, one extra stud used in the entire assembly. So I'm out five bucks, but I only have to carry and lift half the weight each section. So for me, it's a definite win. And it makes a really difficult project of lifting a 16 foot wall where you need two people to help you. And it turns into something you can do on your own. So same thing, we're just gonna mark off all of our 16s. Okay, there's the red squares, mark to the right. Mark to the left, I don't care, but just have a system, okay? Here we go. And I'm gonna be building an eight foot tall wall. The reason for that, a uh, sheet of aspenite, a 716 sheet of aspenite comes four feet by eight feet. So if I make an eight foot wall, I use two sheets and I don't have to cut anything. Okay, think the, the, your design and try to make it fit into your building material regimen and it'll save you a ton of time. Now, to make an eight foot wall, you just go to the store and you buy a 92 and 5 eight stud. Okay, because you get a top plate, a bottom plate, and then a second top plate, and it comes out just a little bit more than eight feet. So it's perfect every time. Now I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven studs. I got my studs marked, I got a top and a bottom plate. Here we go, there we are. Now two by four means that I need two nails because it's one, in, one nail for every two inches of material. There we go. There we go. Once you got it laid out, that's it, nice and easy. Matt, can you grab a pair of pliers for us? Yep. We can pull these staples. A lot of times, guys, your building material is going to come with a pile of staples in it because they ship them wrapped, okay, so that the water doesn't get into it. This is not pressure treated, so it is imperative to keep it dry. Now the reason we're using two fasteners is to keep the wood from twisting after we build. And to help that end, you wanna have your fasteners near the top and the bottom, not two of them grouped together in the middle or they'll still twist, okay? a couple of things to consider. I'm using an inch and a quarter galvanized now. Um, now because there's no code, we can do whatever you want. I mean, you can use a really large crown staple if you're really in the mood. But because this actually has two functions, one, this will square off my wall, but two, it'll also provide a lot of shear strength so that the wall won't collapse and fall over, all right? Inch and a quarter nail in a material that's half inch thick, seven sixteenths, but we'll call it half, means that I need to have three quarters of an inch inside the stud. All right, so three quarters plus half, perfect. We're gonna be just fine with that. Five nails for every length, okay? And you can see that right now the uh, aspenade is overhanging just a little bit here. And that's fine because once we get the walls up, we're gonna put a double top plate on and we're gonna have them crossed over that extra rigidity and tighten the building together. It's just an extra set of hands for when you're working alone. Now, I know we got Matt helping me here today, but not everybody's gonna have a helper. 
the guy. When I lean my wall, he can't fall off to the other side, okay? And that it really helps a lot. The other thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna set up a brace. All right. Okay. Make it nice and tight, back it up a couple of threads while pulling on it. Now it's hinged, okay? So here we go. Now when you're working alone, you'll be able to lift your own walls into place. All right, here we go. Oh. We'll try that again. All right. Whoops. Didn't account for anything. That was just stupid. Okay. And now we've got the right depth. Did I just do that too? Okay. I'm having one of those days, Maddie. You do me a favor. Whip that around the other way. <laughs> ah. Now I'm set up for success. Now all I'm doing is making this perfectly flush. In the corner. Adding a brace. Okay. And it's not gonna go anywhere. All right. Now, we're screwing through this plate on a bit of an angle because remember we have a double rim. So we have three inches of lumber here. And I wanna put this screw into the rim. All right. I'm gonna put one for every stud. All right. There we have it. First wall of the shed. Now my son's gonna build the other one exactly the same size. <laughs> While I run to the store because our material order was shorted to two by tens. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but I've got a 10 foot wall there and a 10 foot wall here. I'm not gonna build those in two sections. That'd be crazy. Okay, so now we got our two panels that are eight feet wide, right, eight feet tall. So that is the total outside perimeter. We're now going to measure, coming forward, we have 116 left on our total dimension. But we wanna take three and a half off of that because I wanna bring this wall up short. Because if I've got a two by four here of this wall, and the, just like the one in the back, then I can actually cap all of these things with one two by four by 10 foot. That I'll tie that wall to this wall to this wall with one piece of lumber. So think then from the beginning, we're gonna go a little bit short. So that's one 12 and a half, right? Beautiful. And that's because we've got the skin on our two by fours. We've got it flush off the end. The goal here is to frame this up, flush off the, off the rim so that we can install vinyl side. Now I know some of you weren't very excited about the idea of us using vinyl siding to finish off the sheds, but at the end of the day, we're trying to keep it simple. It's a quick build. It'll be waterproof. It'll be pretty. It's just, uh, yeah, it's just a little on the cheap side. I know. Every time I use vinyl, the whole world screams, should have used cement fiberboard. I'm like, well, there goes the budget. <laughs>
All right. twisted board you're gonna lose that battle every time if you don't use the nail the screw all right oh I see and you want to get nice and low it's still not gonna be perfect but a nail doesn't have the thread so it's gonna pull out when you twist on nail down the other side okay but if it's twisted and you start nailing it all all you're gonna do is weaken the whole structure Right? There we go. I need a few more screws. Wow. Oh, I got you. You got some money? I think so. Handy. Yeah, I'm not wearing a pouch. Thank you, sir. We'll close this one up. And then... There you go. You can hit that one for me. Pop the head in on that last new. And then we're good. Okay. Yeah, not hard. If you hit it too hard, you're just gonna fire something else off, eh? Lose the hammer. There we go. All right. All right. Let's get the drill. Yeah. I know, we're not putting skin on this one. Truth is, I'm not skinning the last three walls, okay? Gonna save a couple hundred bucks on the shed build. And that's the goal. Remember, we need to keep the weather out. We don't need to build this like Fort Knox. Uh, if you live in an area you're concerned about safety and you want to put a skin on it, go right ahead. But the truth is, in order to have enough structure, all I need is a two by four on a corner brace nailed on the inside, and that'll give me all the structure I need. Now, when you're doing this, getting close is good enough, okay? Because siding has a wonderful ability to make it up for adjustments. If you got gaps or little bumps or ridges or valleys, All right, let's get a few more in the plate, and then you can actually tie this outside corner together with the screws. Make sure when you put a screw in, you close the gap between the wood. Okay. Okay, because if you start and you don't close the gap, you'll right. never close the gap. And the reason we're using screws, of course, again, is if we make a mistake, and it's most likely you might, you can always go back, throw the level on, take out all the screws, fix your corner, and you're gonna be just fine. If you use the power nailer, you're in for a whole lot of fight to fix your problems, eh? Plate in. All right. Give me a little bit of a kick out on the bottom here. Hold on, this board is so warped. Let's go deal with one corner at a time. I got it. Okay. And I'm gonna drive here. That's actually not bad at all. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Because we're going with siding, we're gonna be setting our starter strip to a place where our siding and our house wrap is gonna come right past this corner, okay? So our nailing strip will be around here. Now, whenever you put on a nailing strip, it, it sits like this off the wall, and the siding has its own texture. So little variances like a little piece of wood sticking out or the curve of the wood or a bow on the bottom, doesn't matter, right? Anything within a half an inch of the bundle it's gonna be absorbed in the look of the vinyl siding, and it's gonna be of no consequence. So do not turn your rough framing into a finished carpentry draw job. It'll drive you crazy, all right? Just know what you're dealing with, what the mercy tolerance is on that product. Wow, you really, let me in a bit. Oh, <laughs> I had it on reverse. Imagine that. Oh, thank you, that looks good. Now we'll tie the corner together on the outside. 
Again, we're going to use screws. And this gives us lots of flexibility moving forward on the job. If I want to pull that corner out a little bit, I can. Oh, come on, honey. Every time it's awkward, the screw's got too much pain in it. <laughs> ah. So we're just gonna draw this out so you know the plan. Because we have a 16 foot panel. And like in the back, we did it in two panels, but in the front, we're gonna do it in three. Here's why. We've got a door, okay? That is a 36 inch door. But when you include the framing, it's actually 38, okay? So that's the hole that I need, 38 inch. And then we're gonna have a jack stud on each side And then on the king jack, the king stud on each side as well. All right, and we're going to build a header. So we'll make this one section of wall. Make sense? Now, on the other section, we're going to have a rectangular window on each side. We're going to put rectangular windows near the top on each side to bring in the light. But what that does is it gives you all four walls inside your shed to set up benches, workstations, store tools. That way we can have the light and have all this usable space. If I put the window in the middle of the wall, like a double hung, all of a sudden that, that section of wall on both sides of the door become kind of useless, right? It's kind of like when you're in an old house and the kitchen windows were going down to two feet from the ground and they bring cabinets to the window and then they put another piece of cabinet in between the windows. Your kitchen's only half the size. So this is what we're doing to incorporate that. 16 feet, sorry, at 12 inches, is 184 inches. Minus 38, three, six, 44, gives me 140 inches. Cut that in half. Each side here is 70 inches. Boom. Now we need top and bottom plates at 70 inches. We'll assemble this left to right. Hopefully the math adds up. Okay. So thank you, Matt. That's a perfect 70. So we're gonna mark our center line here, 35. And I'm going to do this in markers so it's easier for you guys to see. Now, I have a window. It's available off the, off the shelf at Home Depot. And it is an 18 by 20. But when you measure them, if my memory serves me correctly, that's the outside dimension of the outside flange. Okay? So the window actually has a jam and then it has a, a one inch overhang. Like that. So what I want to do is I want to frame to here. And make that hole really nice. I'm going to go 18. So I'm going to set my 9 right there, you know, right there, you know, right there. Okay. Here's the studs. We're going to go top to bottom on these studs when, and for framing of our windows. All right. Of course, we need one over here. Of course, we need one over here. And you know what? We're just going to split the difference here. And we're going to put one at 14. Okay, this is uh, less than the 16 on center, but it'll get the job done. All right, there we go. So what's happening here is he brought this stud flush to this. But the truth is, this is kind of like the, the bark side of the tree. And so, look at the gap underneath the stud here. All right? So, I was, I was standing over there, I saw that the bottom was actually perfect, but here, it's actually been kind of peeled off. So, we'll keep that nice and flush, throw one more nail into it, and then uh, we'll take a scrap block and scab it onto the front so that we our nailing surface for our siding stays mm -hmm. flush, okay? Mm -hmm. My window is a 20 by 30, and I'm putting it in horizontally, but I marked it in vertically like an idiot because it's like, how many windows do you put in horizontally in your life? At least now we get to establish how high we want it. I'm gonna have you grab the skill saw, Matt, and we're gonna roll this up. I want an 18 inch space Yeah, that's perfect. I'm gonna come down 28 inches off the top, okay? There. We're gonna reframe on the fly, all right? And so, 
what I'm gonna get you to do is while it's sitting like this, put a cut line in it and then we'll roll it and then you can finish the cut. All right, here we go. Okay, now, let's just think this through. My hole, I wanted it at 18. Plus an inch and a half for the other header. Whoops, my bad. Cut that line. Okay, same thing. It's always easy to come across stuff and not have to bend the tape. 38 and three quarters, twice. All right. So what we're gonna do, Matt, is once we get the windows in, I'll throw in a little back framing once I get them positioned. All right. And. Because I don't have my windows on me. Inside, I might as well just go with screws here. In case I have to make even more changes, find out in the next video if I get the windows the right size. <laughs> Let's do it. We're gonna start from over here. Goes to the outside corner. Keep it coming. Hold it. Okay. All right. All right. I'm just gonna go at two for now. All right? Can you push that your your top out? Right there. Hold on. Let back it up. Here. All right, there we go. That looks pretty darn good to me. Okay, now we build the inside wall. Now, we're gonna measure off the base plate. So what we're gonna do is actually, once we've got this rolled into place and everything is squared and tightened and screwed together, we'll cut the bottom plate out. So that becomes part of the height of the door. And we wanted to go right to seven feet. And in this case, that leaves me room for a two by 10 header. I don't have any two by 10s on me. But in this kind of scenario, remember you're looking to transfer load and it's only gonna pick up uh, two rafters at most. So anything under five feet, you can use a two by six header. Okay, if it's bigger than five feet, you gotta go to two by eight. In a lot of cases, they'll just use two by 10 because it's the same amount of lumber that's left over the hole. So a lot of houses will have a two by 10 header just because it's easy math, right? It's lousy insulation, but it's easy math. What I'm gonna do instead of cheating, and you can here, okay, you can cheat. We can totally just go two pieces of two by six. We do them vertical, we nail them together, go over the jack studs. In a lot of construction, that's thinner than the wall. So what we do is we laminate a half inch piece of plywood in there as well, so it's the same thickness. It uh, just makes it easier if you're gonna do any finishing work or installing boards. We're gonna show you how to do a proper header. Why the heck not? I got some scrap plywood. So we'll just go through the process for you real simple. It's gonna grab some plywood, Matt, I'll be right back. Okay, so this header, it's two by six plus half inch plywood plus two by six. But you don't want your plywood to be in the way. So overhang it quarter inch or half an inch. Make your mark, okay? Trace that out. 
mark the end, and then cut it short on purpose. Remember, the purpose of this filler is to create the right thickness of the total assembly of the wall. So you get to three and a half inches, which is the same as the width of a two by four. It does provide a little bit of strength, but the purpose of it is just to beef it out. So always cut it a little bit small in both dimensions. Just make your life simple. <laughs> Here we go. Now, take a look at your two by sixes or eights or tens. Usually they come bowed, okay? So, place that bow on top of... Yeah, there you go. All right. And then the first thing you want to do is instead of nailing this, you want to screw this. This is a great time for some clamps, especially when you're dealing with dimensional lumber that's a little bit warped. Okay. You want to be able to make sure you're somewhat flush. Ah. That looks really good. All right. Give me some screws, like the top and bottoms. All right, let's get all that driven together. And you do it from both sides, okay? Yeah, and you need to bury it so that you're squeezing all these layers together. There you go, okay? You want four sets of two? Or three yeah, sets of two? well, four is probably better. That stuff's a little warped. If it's not so warped, it's not so bad. But make sure you get the screws right, in, right near the top and bottom, yeah. You'll see this, the assembly, you see how it's... Yeah. You're trying to pinch this two together. Oh, okay. Okay, there we go. How deep you bury in those screws? Half an inch? Yeah. Well, then you're fine. It's just one side. Ah, uh, that's a knot. That's not gonna work. Yeah, set up, set up, set It'll just break, it won't grab. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Throw that sucker on top. Nail it in on both so ends. So I, I have to double it up on both sides? No, he got, so it got, you're going all the way through because you're burying your heads. Oh, okay. I'm not worried about it. All right. All right, so you really want to get um, two in here and two in the bottom piece on both sides. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. It's almost time to bring a ladder out here. Almost. Okay, show me to you on the top. For sure. Here we go. So, okay, you got it. All right, now, here's a really important key. This is getting cut out, all right? So for temporarily, we're gonna put a screw in it. Just keep it away from this joint where you're gonna put your saw blade. <laughs> Things get dirty and you lose track of that. Yeah, it'll wreck your day. All right, now we're, we're anchored. Beautiful. We have one more section to build, but before we do that, I wanna get some support on this. Okay, so I wanna tie this stud together with this one from the inside into that king. And I'm gonna go get a ladder because we have two extra two by tens and I'm gonna put those braces where these two walls meet across the middle to keep everything from bowing and to establish a nice strong joint here for our door, okay? Okay. Now. Ah. Remember how we're gonna go with a, a double top plate? Yep. Okay? Yep. So we're gonna put a two by 10 there, but we can also put one here on this joint. There's a weak spot in the frame now. Yep. And we can put one here on the weak spot. Yep. And then we're laughing, right? So let's get a two by 10 for you. Yeah, that's it. Flush there and half on each and get two screws on it. 
See the screw on the other side? Tie together the other saw plate. Now this is kind of a collar tie. When you look over there, how far over the plywood or the OSB is that sticky? Inch and a half. Okay. Push your well back until it falls in place. Now they're level. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And this becomes like a collar tie of sorts. There you go. That's one of the advantages, Matt, of organizing your wood, because I was able to go, okay, that's crap. It's got a big split. I can't use that on a top or bottom plate, but it makes a great collar tie, right? So then we don't have to go shopping again. All right, now we're building the last piece of wall. Same as the first piece. Life is good. All right, guys, it's next day. Uh, you know, as a DIYer, what you're gonna find is that you don't have systems for everything that you're doing. And so you generally need your wits about you to be successful. And yesterday afternoon in the sun, uh, that was not the case. <laughs> so what we got is let's just take a look at this. Um, obviously I drive in this morning like, holy cow, what was I thinking? I've got a lovely header over here, right? That looks sort of good. Um, truth be told, uh, that header comes to 10 and a quarter inches. Yeah. So, generally speaking, what people will do is they'll use a, uh, a two by eight and another two by four underneath to create that header. Thank you for that. And, uh, <laughs> and that's fine. And so we can show that demonstration in the next one as well. Um, yeah, gonna make it down to eight and 10 of course. This situation right here is kind of like reminiscent of how they used to build back in the 1900s to 1920s, okay? But over time, over the 100 years, what we noticed is that this would start to get a bit of a bow, okay? So there's a lot of houses out there that are really old that have got the, the framing compressed with the jam of the window, putting pressure on the glass, and then the, gra the glass will crack. So this is not a long-term solution. It won't last 100 years, but it's a shed. So we're gonna double up this plate so it acts more strength to transfer load, and that'll help. I also went and bought one of the windows, and I had the measurement wrong. That's my window size. So you'll see that if I'm resting it down on this bottom plate, I've got a significant gap here. So I do have opportunity to stick this double plate on, and we'll do that right now. Nice and snug the way I want it. Making sure that when I'm nailing, I'm not going where the stud is, going right next to it. We're gonna build a couple of braces along the side so that when we do our, our facade, we've got uh, something there to put the material into, and that's fine. And then we're ready to stick the window in. Above this door over here, though, it's a little bit different. Now, we didn't complete this section yet. Uh, in order for a header to work, it has to carry the load. And there's nothing above this header directing load down to it. So, we're gonna put in blocks. Here, 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 and here. That's four points of contact. We'll double the plate again. And now all that little transfer to this and then transfer over to the jack stud, okay? And that'll be perfect. And now when we build the next section, we're going to use this height off the deck as our, as our constant so that both windows are in the same position when we're finished, all right? And then we'll build another header similar like this style with the blocks above, above the top. The only other thing that we made a mistake on was this here. This little, we're gonna call it a collar tie for the sake of a name. It's exactly 10 feet long. Our deck is exactly 10 feet wide, but the aspenite on that back wall is flush with the deck. So the true dimension that this needs to be is nine, sorry, nine foot, 11 and a half inches. So we're gonna take out the screws because we use screws, right? Yes, thank God. And then we're gonna trim this back a half an inch and then reset this wall because right now, that extra half an inch is pushing the front wall out a little bit. We don't want that. You cool if I put them in? Yeah, go right ahead. Nice. 
and just kind of like one on the end and then even spacing. That's the only, the only trick there. Yeah, so what you're gonna find, I think, is that the two by six on the outside is just a little bit higher. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, every tool can be used as a hammer, right? Eh? All right, <laughs> let's get you up on the top plate there. Pop off those screws, Matt. Completely. Yeah, there you go. You don't want them anywhere near you while you're cutting. Now half an inch, yeah? There you go, sweet. Now you can knock the block out of the way. Now you can screw that back on. It's now flush on the outside and takes us to perfectly level. Uh, now we've got all of our modifications taken care of. And the only thing I'm not liking here, Matt, is when this was all nailed together, uh, there's gaps here. I'd like to get a couple of screws in here. When the lumber comes really twisted, you gotta screw your gap shut or they're gonna stay twisted and open and then nothing's gonna be square. Installation of the door will be a nightmare. Try to take care of all the problems before they're becoming a problem. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like if you look through two pieces of wood and you can see daylight, you gotta add some screws. All right guys, so now for the last section, we're just gonna measure bottom plate right to the edge of this stud, which is 78 and a quarter, okay? We're gonna do top and bottom exactly the same. When you're building, as long as your top and bottom plates are exactly the same size, you can put all your panels together and you're gonna end up pretty darn close to square. And when I say that, that's perfect. Close is perfect in framing, okay? Don't be too hard on yourselves. Now I know a lot of you guys might be asking, hey Jeff, you didn't frame your anything on 16 on center across the front. How in the world are you gonna put your sheet goods on there? Um, circle weapon, I'm not, okay? This is an affordable, simple shed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually just put bracing on the inside, we're gonna add vinyl siding. Vinyl siding doesn't need frame 16 on center. It just needs framing every so often. So knowing that, it makes this project simple. So you can break this down into digestible pieces that can be built one at a time, and you can get a great result, and you can do it all by yourself. So what I'm doing over here is I'm just using the window. I'm marking my spot where I want to put another brace here, okay? So I have a nailing surface around the window on the outside. That'll facilitate adding the J trims and that sort of thing for the window. And it also, I need to have this ordered so I know exactly what the distance from my double on the door is to the inside of this stud. So I can duplicate that on the other side. So it becomes a mirror image. So the distance from the corner here is 15 and three quarters. Guess I better double check that. That is to the outside, the outside of that frame. And that'll create the window cavity that'll mirror the other side of the door. And that's the look that we're going for, very symmetrical. Now, I'm gonna frame this one a little different now that I've got an actual dimension. My next stud is gonna be on the other side of the window. It's 48 and a half. Beautiful. So we've got a stud here that's got a nice warp to it. So what you do is first you go buy one of these hammers, okay? You can, DeWalt has the claw, uh, S-Wing has a claw, and you're gonna wanna put your nail near the bottom, right? And then we can rotate that into position. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. So you wanna shoot the bottom one in? Shoot the bottom. Okay. Then you put your claw on here, 
And look at all the levers, one hand. And now you can throw an extra nail or two in there. Okay, so if you push it just a little past where you want it, throw in a nail, it'll all settle right in position. That is how you fix crooked wood. I got four nails on each side. That transfers load really, really nicely, okay? And because there's no second story, there's no real live load other than the roof itself, and then a little snow load in the winter, winter time, uh, that, that transfer is gonna be in the thousands of pounds, so it's not an issue. Now we gotta do, set this one in the same height. Before we nail that, because we're working in the, in the heat, Call. Yeah, good call. Yeah, there you go. I was close. Yeah. Well, what in the world, eh? Oh, that's right. This one goes on that side of the line. Okay. Remember the line that I put that there? Now I've got a little bit of room. Okay, so I can maneuver that properly. Here we go. You can nail that down. Oh. Yeah, sure. You know, if you uh, if you did nothing but framing carpentry every day of your life, you'll have systems in place. But as a DIYer, you don't. So take one step at a time. Measure over and over again. You know, use your windows, use your doors. Think through your process one step at a time. Because uh, when you're working out in the sun, you go from genius to grade two stupid in about 20 minutes. Well, let me say we stand this up and see how she looks. Sure. Yeah, a little hot for the belt today, huh? Okay. Now we're gonna go in front of the other sidewall. All right, so just walk it right over here. I'll extend past the door and then watch the top, bring it all the way over in front and go okay. wide on purpose. I got it, I got it. There we go. She's just catching nails on the floor. All right. So first thing we're gonna do, grab a hammer and a nailer. I'm gonna hammer it in. And we'll drop a, a nail in the corner. Perfect. Right here. Beautiful. Here. Let's go with, uh, yeah, that's a really nice stud. Okay, here, hold on. We're gonna use screws up there, okay? Let's hit this triple here. All right, there we go. Now it's not falling over. All right, and we're just gonna level off and flush this corner. All right, that'll hold it all for now. We'll get a little more stability in this in a minute. All right, guys, so we got a triple here. The double is existing. This piece, we're trying to connect these top plates together. All right, and at the same time, we have this incredible issue. You can see the daylight. That's pretty close. I'm thinking, set that at the top, okay, and compress those studs together, right on the right on the plate. Yeah, if you do it on the plate, it'll it'll guarantee it's straight. If the studs are out a little bit, that's one thing. But if the plates are out, that's another. The plates being connected are more important than the studs being in the right place because the plates are gonna affect the roof rafters. So we wanna to try to keep that straight. Now we got the wall straight, we wanna get rid of this gap. The best way to do it is with a three inch screw going straight in, not on an angle, okay? One on each side, and the idea is you, you screw in the close side first, because it's the easiest. You close that gap, and you screw that screw until it closes the gap, even if the head goes into the wood a half an inch, okay? You gotta close the gap. Then you can do it the other side. Okay, you got it. Now it's touching. Now when you close the other side, it's gonna need more force. Yep. So you might wanna almost reach over and hold it. Oh, your, your drill's short enough. Okay, good. Oh boy. 
I'm not the best with this tool, eh? Yeah, it's okay. Now drive it before it closes. There you go. There you go. There you go. You got it. Now you can drive the one on top even more and see if it closes up more. Okay, we got it. That's about as far as we're gonna go. You grab that other 10 foot two by four mat. We still have that, I hope, right? Yes. Take a, take a half inch off of that one, and we'll do the same thing at this triple. Come across again. All right. All right, and then hit the corner. Two on the one wall and two on the other wall. Okay, that's plenty. Now all we want to do is make sure that we nail in here. We got this one. Get one near the top there to pull that corner together. Beautiful, we're in good shape here. So before we get the rest of the top plates in though, what I want to do is I want to get a couple of cross braces inside the wall, okay? Now, this is important for you guys at home. Um, we've got our windows positioned so that if you want, you can modify, you can put bench here, you can put bench down the side. You can do anything you want to do with this space because your window isn't interrupting the space, right? So this can become a work table. What we do want to do is we want to get a, uh, a cross piece that goes from here right down towards that door. And we want to nail it to the studs that create that rigidity so the wall can't move like this. Because right now, it can still rock back and forth. And when I do that, the back wall of the Asplanate doesn't move at all because it's sheeted with that sheet good. But out here, we're not going to spend the money on that. We're going to use a $5 piece of 2x4 to create that rigidity. Problem solved. Yep. All right? Then what we're doing is we're actually... Yeah, I told you. Not bad, eh? We're leveling left to right here. So you can start off by... Let's keep a gap over here so we got some room. Throw me, throw, me a, throw me a couple of nails in the bottom of that end of the plate. Um, through the front. There we go. Okay. Now you can hold the level on that. I'll take this. Okay, it's got to go your way. There you go. Right there. Just for a demonstration, I want you to stand over there. Okay. On the outside corner? Yep. Now try to push it back and forth this way. Yeah, that's not tied together yet. Okay. <laughs> Grab this wall. It's not going anywhere, is it? No. We want to brace them from the inside so we can get our exterior braces off. That's what's holding it in level right now. But once we take the outside off so that we can do our facade, we want to have the interior braces in place. If you're building your shed and you're gonna design um, benches and stuff tied up against the wall and you don't wanna have an interior brace, then you have to use the sheet on the outside. That'll give you the stability that you want without the interference of the wood in front. Okay, here we go. Now that one's already braced, so you can just throw it in the corner, right? It's actually nice right above there. Okay. And then you can just... You want to nail it and I'll level it. The bubble needs to go to the left. All right, that's good. All right. Never hesitate. <laughs> if you hesitate, you die. <laughs> here we go. Is that a movie quote? Yes, sir. Let's get one more over here. All right. You got the level on it? Let me know when it's perfect. Yeah. All right, we're officially tied in. That means all we gotta do is measure the rest of the top plates as an infill. Yep. Throw another 10 foot brace minus a half an inch from here to here. All right guys, that's the last section for framing your walls, getting in the rest of your top plate. Once you got your corners tied together, you gotta fill in the rest of the spaces. Remember, you don't have to frame this like a finished carpenter. You want to do this like a framing carpenter. Give yourself a little bit of space when you need it. If it has a little wiggle room, it's okay. Because the way this works is every one of these rafters comes down and needs to have solid contact. 
there's a little gap. It ain't gonna change the integrity of the structure. If you wanna see us finish off this build, make sure you hit the subscribe button, the bell for notifications, and we will see you in the next week's video. Cheers.